Going into today's webinar, today we'll, we, we will be discussing the six biggest and avoidable mistakes made during a divorce. I am Jonathan Brown. I'm a certified financial planner with Cornerstone Wealth here in Greenville, South Carolina. Cornerstone is a wealth management firm with a mission of providing clarity and confidence to our clients' financial lives. We help our clients deal with life-changing events, and divorce is a significant event that has many financial planning implications. When I think of a life-changing event like divorce, I'm reminded of a quote by the author Mandy Hale, who says, change is painful, but nothing is as painful as staying stuck somewhere that you don't belong. One of Cornerstone's core values is collaboration, both internally with our team and externally with professionals in our community in order to serve our clients. And in the spirit of collaboration, I'm pleased to be joined today by Lori Pashnick, who is the founder of, of Greenville's Well Relate Coaching. She is a professional counselor and a certified divorce coach. Lori offers pre and post divorce support and relational coaching, which can be held in person, by phone or through video conferencing. And as a coach, she draws upon her background as a counselor educator with over 25 years in the mental health field. Uh, Lori has a PhD in counselor education and supervision, and she partners with individuals to help them discover the fears and obstacles that pull them away from where they need to look in their quest toward a meaningful and fulfilled life. So today, like I said, we're gonna be discussing the six biggest and avoidable, avoidable mistakes made during a divorce. Uh, and Lori, thank you for joining us today. Why don't you start a little bit by telling us you know, why people need help during the divorce process and how a coach can help them. Okay, well, absolutely. So thank you, Jonathan, for that introduction. So why do people need help with divorce? Um, for those of you who have, are going through the divorce or have been through divorce, you know that it is a highly emotional event. It is the second most stressful event uh, in life, and the first being that, the death of a spouse. And so there's just really a, a wide range of emotions of that we experience when we go through divorce, um, from fear, rejection, anger, um, hurt, loneliness, sadness, um, guilt. Um, and those emotions can become overwhelming and really impact our ability to think clearly. And so a divorce coach really is sort of that of a thinking partner. Um, a divorce coach works in conjunction with attorneys. They do not provide any legal advice. They don't give any financial advice. They do not do therapy. Instead, they really um, bring a very different set of skills to the divorce process. And so a divorce coach would help individuals um, clarify their thoughts, help them organize their thoughts, um, help them explore options, um, perhaps they would help them gather documents that are needed for the divorce process. Um, and also they do some of that internal work as, as well. And they might help people manage their emotions or their emotional triggers and reaction in these really stressful times. So they really help um, individuals make informed decisions. Um, so with all of that, hearing all of that, taking all that into consideration, you can see how a client would be better able to communicate with attorneys because when you know, when you're thinking clearly, you know what you want, you know what you need, you can present those and communicate that to your attorney and to the other professionals on your team. Um, well, and in addition to um, being that of a thinking partner, um, I consider myself also that of a sounding board. And as each um, coach sort of brings a different style of coaching to their um, clients, Mine um, kind of comes from my background in the mental health profession. And so I just really have a passion to um, help people use loss and uh, life-changing events to grow. And when you do that, that's just really what builds resilience. Um, and um, in this sort of dark moment, these dark times are nuggets of light there's nuggets of hope and nuggets of possibility. Um, and as a um, sounding board, divorce coaches can also help you maintain relationships, healthy relationships with those who are most important to you. They kind of help keep you focused on really what's most important and helping not, you know, your little children or family members become casualties during this really stressful time. 
And then finally, I mean, the reason that the whole um, topic of our presentation today is that there are very general mistakes that people make during the process. And so again, a divorce coach can um, identify and help you discover, you know, what is your vision? How, where do you see yourself in three to five years from now or beyond? Because the decisions you make now during your divorce is really gonna help you get to that place. Yeah, great. Well, thank you, Laurie. Well, it sounds like you've got some great perspective with you know, your background in you know, mental health and, and, and kind of combining that with coaching to help people navigate this really difficult situation. So we're going to start with uh, mistake number one, throwing in the towel. Tell us a little bit about how someone might get to the point where they'd be ready to you know, quit and walk away from the process. Yeah, sure. I think you know, the person who wants to quit is a discouraged person. They are just really worn down by the process and they just want to get it over with. Um, they are worn down by the conflict. They're worn down perhaps by the silence and it's just, just the stress that it creates in their lives. And it's not uncommon during a time, you know, going through divorce where your work performance can suffer, which creates a lot of stress as well, as well as just personal relationships are affected. Um, I mentioned in the previous slide, um, just remembering your family and those that are most important to you. And just with the, the burden of the stress, you could you know, have a short fuse and it can really impact those people around you that you really care about. And, and, you know, and I've also heard clients say this quite a bit that they feel like you know, the deck is really stacked, stacked against them, that they don't really see that the process has been fair or that there hasn't been this emotional justice that they were hoping to gain from it. And so they feel very discouraged and they think, you know what, just give my spouse whatever my spouse wants. I just, I just want out. I just want this to be done with. Yeah. And what might be some of the consequences to you know, throwing in the towel in that situation? Well, the most obvious consequence is that um, when you throw in the towel and you don't address those issues that you need to, you may end up settling for less than you deserve, or you may end up pouring, uh, paying out more than you can really afford. Um, and so at the time, you uh, don't have the wherewithal to really care about these issues, but in a couple months or within a year, you might very well care about these issues um, because it isn't working out for you. Um, and so you go back to court to rehash and kind of fix those problems that um, you need to, to look at again. And so it seems like Initially, you know, wanting that short-term relief uh, seems like the best thing to do at the time, but really you're risk risking that sort of long-term um, well-being. Yeah, and then how would you as a coach help someone, you know, navigate this situation? So um, this is just a vulnerable time. Um, and, you know, individuals do not have to go through this process alone. And so a divorce coach really will walk alongside you and help you really draw on your strengths, those reserves. It's still there, your strengths are there. And uh, they can help you pull them back up and remember them and together you can collaborate and work you know, toward a path, work forward and find um, a way through it. Well, we're going to move on to mistake number two, which is allowing others to make your decisions. Tell us why this is a big mistake. Sure. So um, there are such a multitude of decisions to make. There's just an enormous amount of decisions to make in this process that that in and of itself is just incredibly overwhelming. And so it's really seems almost natural to say, well, you know, my divorce lawyer has done tons of these. They're an expert in this. I'm going to you know, listen to that person's guidance or help let them help me make the decisions um, for my divorce. Or perhaps you even think that the judge is going to be, if it in fact even makes it to court, can help you, you know, decide what you need to do for you and your family. But it's really important to recall that only you really know what is in the best interest for you, that others do not have that insight. I mean, they have you know, well equipped to provide um, legal advice and so forth, but they don't have that insight into your needs, into your family's needs, into, into your concerns and your fears and your hopes. Um, only you have that, only you know that. And so it's, it's really important to not relinquish that decision-making to someone else because it can end up 
they can end up badly. You can end up, obviously, like in the last slide, you can end up you know, returning to court to remedy or fix those, those um, issues. And Lori, what can a divorce coach do to help you maintain your decision-making power? So process. yeah, in order just to help re, help remind the the client the person of what their what their purpose, what what is their purpose, and to really remain true to their values and to their interests to help them um, kind to to remember you know what is it that you need, what is it that you want. When you know what you need and when, when you know what you want, it really makes decision making just a lot easier. And and also in addition. Um, that there's, there's a, a whole host of people out there who can be supportive, who can help fill in those gaps, those blind spots, who can help you see what you can't see. Um, and I'm talking about a support team. So a divorce coach can help you build a support team. So not just a coach and attorney, but there's financial planner, insurance agent, CPA, parent coordinator, child specialist, child therapist, adult therapist, um, real estate agents, and there's other attorneys that may be appropriate to use at the time as well. And so knowledge is golden. And with when we arm ourselves with knowledge, it just makes decision making a lot easier. Yeah, definitely. And I, and I think the, you know, this mistake definitely hits on the, the key point of the title of an avoidable mistake. So yes. you know, by surrounding yourself with a good support team and having someone kind of guide you along the way. It, it definitely sounds like this is a mistake you could easily avoid. And, you know, the more information you have, the better equipped you are at, uh, at making effective decisions. Um, you know, so I imagine that you know, getting information from qualified resources is going to be beneficial to the decision making process. And that brings us to mistake number three, uh, which is not seeking out qualified resources. Yes. So really what we're talking about here is just really expanding the potential uh, amount or quality and quantity of resources. Um, so the, ra the range of possible resources. And so it's really easy to um, want to sort of go it alone or really lean on our inner circle because those are the people that care about us, that we trust, that trust us, that love us and want the best for us. Um, and maybe it's a family member or a friend who, who they have gone through a divorce as well. And so they're giving you advice. And it, it's really important to remember that their, that advice is really is based on their experience. It's based on their, their marriage, their family, and their divorce. Because each divorce is different. And you have to remember it is about your family, your marriage, and your divorce. And so it can easily bring us back to court. You may end up you know, really accepting a settlement that is less than ideal. And of course, that's going to, to bring us more stress. Um, and, and during this time, a divorce coach can really listen very intently to your situation, ask very pertinent questions to help you discover and identify any blind spots, and then therefore can introduce you to experts who may be able to help you fill in those blind spots. Um, I think a really good example, Jonathan, is financial planning. Finances, when it goes without saying, are immensely tied into decision making in the divorce process. And so when we work with a financial planner, that person has that expertise, sort of that sophistication to really understand cash flow and asset division division that most of us can't. And so, you know, Jonathan, you're in the field, you know, how, what value can a financial planner um, give to someone who is going through a divorce? Well, I think, Laura, even in a, in a time where someone isn't going through, you know, a, a divorce and kind of what strain or stress that causes, you know, in your life, finances can, you know, can add stress in kind of normal times. And then you you, know, you add the stress of financial uncertainty to everything else that someone's going through during a divorce and it just makes it that much more difficult. So I think working with a financial planner throughout the divorce process is helpful because it allows you to visualize your financial future and that's going to provide you with greater understanding of your path forward. Um, this allows uh, us as the financial planners to kind of, kind of diagnose areas of someone's financial life that, that needs attention and um, then can kind of divert resources to 
you know, addressing those goals or objectives or needs that you have. And you know, part of the financial planning process too through a divorce is you know, acknowledging that you're embarking on a new chapter in your life. So the financial plan is going to be about you and your goals, your objectives, your passions in life. And that might be slightly different than what those you know, goals or objectives might have looked like five or 10 years ago during your marriage. Um, so it's always important to you know, kind of have a good visual understanding of your financial plan. And that's what uh, we as planners can do using the software that we have access to. Um, another, you know, kind of added value that a financial planner can provide in this process is just, you know, giving some guidance on what sort of assets that are being divided are, you know, best for someone's current and future financial plan. And um, here on the, the slide, it says that not all assets are equal. And what I'm referring to here is, uh, the, the tax and potential penalty implications of taking funds out of a pre-tax retirement account. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of their wealth stored in a 401k or pension plan if they're still in their working years. And you want to make sure that you're addressing your you know, current liquidity needs and also future financial needs. And, and by engaging with a financial planner, they can provide guidance as far as you know what's best for your current financial situation, but also um, for the future. And then I think last but not least is just you know allowing you to have a greater understanding of your financial affairs is going to you know free up time and energy to focus on your physical and emotional health, which is typically going to take you know, a big toll going through a, a stressful time like this. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that really jumps out to me in, in your um, description is not all assets are equal, which I think is a really great example of how someone who has an expertise in the field can see things that others can't see. And therefore, armed with that information and that knowledge is just going to help you to make such stronger uh, decisions. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, we're, we're moving on to mistake number four, Laurie. So this is my way or the highway. And it kind of sounds like the title to a, a country song. Uh, why is this a common and avoidable mistake that someone might make during a divorce? Yeah. Yeah, it does sound like a title to a country song. Those, those um, sort of lyrics that are near and dear to our hearts, you know, those stories that, that resonate with us. Um, so my way or the highway is probably a scenario that most of us think of, of when we think about how a divorce can go badly. It's the type of scenario we see on, they're made of movies. Um, it is, I am right and you are wrong and there's nothing you can say to change my mind. It is just really like digging in your heels, just being obstinate and really, really refusing to hear or acknowledge others' views. And so this is a very adversarial approach that comes with huge losses that are both emotional losses as well as financial losses. Yeah, definitely. And it sounds like there would be consequences to wanting to win at all costs. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, absolutely. Like, like most of the um, mistakes, it, it's gonna end up costing more money because it's gonna become a longer divorce process and it's gonna take more toll on you and you're gonna feel a lot more stressed out. But I also think one of the unintended consequences is that of, uh, is the relationships that can become damaged with this sort of level of conflict. Um, we may want to be right and we want it our way and our own way that we are really, we might be overlooking what is really most important to our children's well being. Something that I don't think we would want. We just do that unintentionally. I mean, there might be so much animosity between. Um, you know, you and your spouse, but for your children, it's clearly a different perspective. I mean, these are your parents. Um, one of the things that I hear from every client that I've ever worked with is, I don't want my children to suffer from this event. You know, I want them to be able to adjust to it. I'm so worried about them. That is true of everyone that I've ever worked with. And so what is really important is there are three factors that really are, are really going to affect post-divorce uh, adjustment in children. And the first one is the relationship that each child has with each parent. It's also, the second one is the duration and the intensity of conflict. 
And the third one is, is the parent's ability to focus on the needs of the children. And so you can see right there that you want to really keep conflict at a minimum so that your family will win. And you don't want to miss good solutions. And it, like you just said, it, this is something that's driven by conflict. So as a divorce coach, you know, how do you kind of help someone navigate through, um, you know, that situation and not, not letting the conflict get the best of them? Well, that, yeah. so exactly. You want to help the person clarify really their true needs and their true wants, what their interests are, not that position, not that position that they're just hanging on to. Um, and in this position, at this time too, you're going to help them really find their best self. They're going to have to dig pretty deep during a time that's going to be very challenging to find their best self, to do what's best for the family. And it can feel like if you let go of that position, like you, you're losing or you lost. And I get it. You know, it's, it is natural to want to resist. And who knows what's going on in the situation. But um, it's really important to remember to um, look at the big picture and make the best decision for your family. Um, and that includes keeping the lines of communication open. So a divorce coach can really help you assert yourself respectfully, not be defensive, um, refrain from you know, negativity or criticism or name calling. Um, so all of those things um, a divorce coach can help you stay focused on to get the best for your entire family. Yeah, and one of the things, uh, Laura, we have listed here is uh, you, know, you can help by role playing. Tell us a little bit about you know, how, that, how that might help you know, with a kind of an adversarial situation. Okay, so in, in this situation, when stress is really high, um, a lot of us will react, we'll, we'll sort of go to our go-to behaviors, our automatic reactions. Um, it might be where we overreact or become angry, we might withdraw or we might avoid. And, and any of those types of behaviors are, are not gonna lead to really good solutions. And so something that I really like to do in my work with clients is to help them become aware of those emotional triggers. So when they um, begin to understand the emotions that are driving their behavior, they see that there are options and there's different ways of behaving. There's different ways to respond. And then we can play role play those responses. And there's just a lot of different ways to do role play. And I find that to be really effective. Definitely. Um, well, moving on to mistake number five, betting the farm on another relationship. Lori, tell us a little bit about this mistake and you know, why it would be a major pitfall in this process. Okay. Well, so some, someone may come to the divorce having already met someone. There's this new relationship, um, this new person. And they're thinking, you know, I'm feeling pretty good. And this person, uh, I'm not so worried about you know, asset division, and maybe this person will take care of me, or maybe they're just really clouded because they're really excited in their new relationship. And um, it's so common when you meet someone new, it's very, it's a very exciting time. Um, your boundaries collapse, you become very like overly connected to that individual and things just look pretty spectacular. And um, eventually those boundaries go back up and things look more realistic. And it doesn't mean that new relationship isn't going to make it or not. This is just what happens. But during this time, it's still a very vulnerable time. And you may be seeing things through rose-colored glasses. And so you really want to slow down. And you really want to be true to what your values are and stay in control of your decisions. And I think it's just, it's really just the responsible thing to do. It's important to remember just to end this relationship, to end your marriage well before you move on to the next chapter in your life. Um, because you may end up with a settlement that you're not happy with. And so that's just a risk that you're you know, willing to forego. And you know, again, the financial planning implications um, are numerous in this. So I think it's really important to consider what the financial implications are when there's a potential new partner in your life. And I'm, I'm hoping, Jonathan, that you can kind of speak to this. What, what are some of those implications? Well, I think, you know, there's a few. It, it kind of starts with if, if, you're, if your new partner that you're with, it, you feel like they're going to support you financially and you haven't yet finalized the divorce, asset division, alimony agreement, you know, child support uh, issues of your, of your divorce, 
you know, you're ignoring your, your current and future financial needs. Um, and then, you know, kind of the next step is if that relationship with the new partner does progress, there are some implications when, you know, you're, you're getting into the next marriage and, you know, that can be, uh, you know, as simple as, you know, does that new spouse have, you know, are you going to be subject to that new spouse's creditor claims? And there is some, you know, important estate planning techniques that can be done before you get into that next marriage that can help protect assets that you're bringing into a marriage from being subject uh, to creditor claims. It can also be something as simple as just not commingling assets um, right off the bat. Um, there's also what's called the spousal elective share um, in most states, including here in South Carolina. Um, so there's some important estate planning implications too that you want to make sure that you're, you know, uh, updating your estate plan, you're having the discussion of a prenuptial agreement, and by working with a financial planner, your planner can really help kind of frame that discussion in a way so that it's going to be productive with your new partner before you get married. Um, an attorney told me one time that, you know, talking about a prenup is like litigating the divorce before it really happens, and that's not what we want to have happen when you know, we're looking at protecting our own interests and recommending what we feel like is best for our clients. Um, and because we deal with these issues all the time, we can help frame that conversation in a way that is going to make it productive. Yeah, um, I, I can see that. I think um, it's, this seems like a, a delicate issue to talk about, but if it's put on the table uh, professionally and talked about objectively, it can really give someone that protection and that, that's that sort of um, peace of mind for the future. It sure will. And I, and I think it's also, you know, important, you know, I think, Laurie, like you mentioned earlier on the slide that, you know, uh, part of why someone might find themselves in this situation is their guard is down a little bit. They might be a little bit more vulnerable and, and not necessarily, you know, be their own advocate for themselves. So that's where a financial planner, you know, looking out for, for our client's best interests is going to, you know, kind of help falling into that, this pitfall. Absolutely. All right. Well, we're moving on to mistake number six. Um, last but not least, wanting guarantees and certainties. And um, as, an, as an investment professional, uh, I know that guarantees and certainties in the investment world are unrealistic. Tell us why this is uh, you know, an unrealistic expectation to have when going through yeah. the divorce process. I know. It sure would be nice. It really would be nice to have guarantees in life. And um, it doesn't happen, but you know, we, we can do the best we can do. Um, but in this situation, it, you know, you may be someone who was in a long-term marriage, maybe you've never been on your own, and this is going to be the first time that you're on your own, or maybe following the divorce, you've never really um, handled the finances in your household. And so you're going into this process and you're wondering, you, know, you don't really understand if this, in fact, is a good settlement. Um, you can't really see your way forward because you, you don't know if there's no guarantee. There is no guarantee. And so fear can start to drive the process for you. And there can be a lot of questions, a lot of what ifs and a lot of questions that come into mind. Um, you know, what if I lose my job? What if my spouse loses his or her job? You know, what if I have to not, I have to work full time now and not part time when I really want to raise my children? Um, can I afford to take that vacation every year? And so you, you don't know. Um, and in order to sort of maintain or gain a sense of control from this, you pull inward and you start to look at some really minor issues that you do have control over. Um, and your attorney, being your advocate, is going to fight for those issues for you. And so that can actually start to really frustrate the process more than, more than help it along. So you're really missing the big picture and you're really um, could be missing a really generous offer during this time. And Lori, how would a divorce coach help someone deal with the uncertainty in this type of situation? Well, you know, I guess, again, just walking alongside someone um, and helping them to identify um, and to begin to understand the offers that are there on the table in front of them. And so you can, all those things that you're thinking, you can use as a sounding board. You work with your thinking partner and you can explore alternatives, the pros and cons of, a, of an offer, uh, best case scenario, worst case scenario. Again, I always go back to what is it that you need? What is it that you want? What are your interests? What are the interests of your family? Um, so that you can make those best decisions. Um, 
And again, there are people out there. Knowledge is golden. Um, there are people who have information that you need that they have. And when you get that information, there's clarity. And when you have clarity, you feel very confident in the decisions that you're making. So a divorce coach can help introduce you, help identify those and then help introduce you to people who can help you. Well, thank you, Lori. That concludes uh, the six biggest and avoidable mistakes. Uh, next, we're going to talk a little bit about the post-divorce financial checklist. And, and this is something that you know, over time we have built in working with a great number of people that have gone through the divorce process. Um, we're actually going to include a downloadable version of this that you know, someone can save or print for themselves if they happen to be you know, going through the situation. And you know, I think first and foremost, it starts with uh, you know, updating your estate plan, beneficiary designations, and looking at how property or assets you own are titled. Um, in many cases, people that are married are going to list each other as their power of attorneys. They're going to list each other as executors for their estates. Um, if they have small children, you know, you want to be sure that you're, you're listing who you would want to be the guardian for your child if, God forbid, something were to happen to you. So that's part of the estate plan update. Uh, as far as beneficiary designations are concerned, you know, this would be on retirement accounts, life insurance policies, you can even designate a, a beneficiary on a bank account. Um, and in a lot, again, in a lot of cases, you know, people set up these types of life insurance policies or retirement plans while they're married. And it's just common for people to, uh, you know, ignore updating the beneficiary after they get divorced. And unfortunately, there are many, many stories out there of, you know, someone passing away and their ex-spouse receiving their inheritance when it was intended to go to children or other family members. Uh, so this is something that we always, you know, help our clients with and, you know, kind of walk them through every step of the process. Um, secondly, we have cybersecurity. So this is, you know, updating username and passwords on all financial accounts, um, you know, not only, you know, to protect your ex-spouse from potentially you know, looking at your financial situation, just remember that you're in a vulnerable position right now. And unfortunately, there are you know, people out there that try to take advantage of folks going through a difficult situation like this. Um, one thing that we recommend all of our clients do on, you know, their, their investment account, financial logins, or bank account uh, website logins is to set up two-factor authentication. So you enter in your username and password, it takes you to another screen, and then that website will send you a text message to your phone so that you holding your phone are the only person that can actually log in and see that account. And then the last thing on that bullet point is a credit freeze. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you're, you're in a vulnerable situation and you're protecting yourself from identity theft by temporarily freezing your credit. And um, not a good idea if you're planning to buy a house or, you know, finance a car or sign up for a new credit card or something like that. But if you're not planning to do anything regarding your credit, it is a really wise thing to do to freeze your credit because um, trying to unwind identity theft and being made whole is just a really stressful and time consuming process. And probably one of the last things someone would want to deal with when um, just having completed a divorce. And then we kind of move on to financial planning and you know, identifying your short and long-term financial goals. I mentioned earlier that you know, your financial plan is about you and, and the new chapter in your life that you're embarking on. And you know, an, an example for a short-term financial goal might be something like you know, saving up money for the down payment of a new house or going back to school to learn you know, new career skills. Um, and then a long-term financial goal might be something like, you know, becoming financially independent or um, starting that new career so that you can replace, you know, your alimony that which might be, um, you know, scheduled to stop after a certain period of time with income from your new career, or even then, you know, further down the road preparing for retirement. So part of what we do in the financial planning process is to you know, identifies goals and objectives that people have and then put together a plan that's going to help you accomplish those things. And by us meeting with our clients, you know, three, four, five times a year, we're able to make sure that we're staying on track to meet those goals. And as your life changes, your plan changes along with it. Um, next, we have in ensuring that your tax returns are filed uh, 
one reason I have this listed here is it's very common for one spouse in a, in a marriage to be the one that handles all the financial matters. Um, so it's, it is very common that after a divorce, someone doesn't even know that they have to file a tax return or what they need to do to get that done. And as a financial planner, that's something I just make sure our clients do on a regular basis and introduce an expert to help them um, if needed, because, you know, again, one of the last things you want to have happen after your divorce is to, you know, be behind the eight ball when it comes to dealing with the IRS and just making sure that you're you know, doing those, those basic things is, is kind of part of this checklist. Um, and then lastly, here we have uh, reviewing your insurance coverage. In a lot of instances, uh, it, whether it's health, disability, life insurance, a lot of times that's provided by one of the two spouses through their employer. So you have options when you get divorced to stay on your, your former spouse's health plan for a certain period of time and your financial planner can kind of help you navigate other options that might be out there. Uh, we can also look at whether or not it makes sense to have life disability or long-term care insurance based on your financial plan and based on you know, where you are in life and if there are people that are potentially, you know, potentially dependent on your income uh, or in the, in the case of long-term care, if, if you've you know, now are living by yourself and you're approaching you know, that kind of vulnerable age, making sure that your assets are gonna be protected, not having to be spent on um, assisted living or nursing care expenses. Uh, and then lastly, you know, auto homeowners or renters coverage. This is all just about protect, you know, protecting your liability and potential risk. Um, and it's one of those things that's just easy to miss. Again, if you weren't the person that was you know, kind of in charge of the finances um, in your relationship. So again, we're going to have a, um, a downloadable form for this, just this easy checklist to kind of go through to make sure that you're on track. Yeah, that's a, um, that's a great list. It's, it's, um, it seems so daunting, but knowing that when you're working with someone who can help you through this, again, you don't have to, to do all these things alone, but it seems like there's really important um, issues to take care of that you might not have thought of, and that can give you a peace of mind. Exactly, Lauren. You know, and if you're working with a financial planner to do this, it's not going to be stressful. We're going to make it easy. We're going to make sure that we get it done and it allows you to focus on, you know, the other things in your life that, that do need attention. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, Lori, how about recapping uh, the six mistakes here? I, I certainly will. Uh, before I summarize the six mistakes, um, I just want to provide a reference for you. Um, it is a book by Peggy and Randall Cooper. It is called Divorce, Overcome the Overwhelm, and Avoid the Six Biggest Mistakes. And so a lot of the um, information referenced in this uh, presentation you can find in there as well. So going through the um, recap, throwing in the towel, um, this is when you're feeling most vulnerable and worn out um, and have to remember to, you've got those reserves, draw on those inner strengths. Um, Number two, allowing others to make decisions. This is really believing that there's someone who knows what is best for you when that is not true. You only know what is best for you and your family. Uh, number three, not seeking out qualified resources. Um, you don't have to do this alone. There are lots of people out there who have great information that can help you through this process. Uh, number four, my way or the highway. Um, digging your heels in, being obstinate um, is not the way for your family to win. There, there really are very few wins this way. Um, betting the farm on another relationship, um, remembering to just end your current relationship and your marriage well before you start a new chapter. And the last one, wanting guarantees. Um, you know, don't let the uh, fear drive the process and look at the um, settlement the, that's on the table and uh, decide whether if it's right or wrong for you. So I have, oh, no, actually, we're going to talk about our contact information. That's right. So uh, if you'd like to reach out to either Laura or myself, uh, you can see our phone numbers and email addresses listed here. And um, Lori, maybe tell us a little bit about, you know, how that conversation begins with, with the client that you might just start working with. Sure. Okay. So this is, this is very, really, this is simple. Just, um, you can call me at the number that's listed on the screen or you can email me and we can set up a, uh, 
free consultation, complimentary consultation. And during that time, it's approximately 45 minutes. It could go longer um, if we have more to discuss. Um, and we will talk about what your immediate concerns are. We'll talk about your long-term vision. Um, we'll lay out a possible path to reach those goals. And if it's uh, something, if you'd like to work with me, then we'll just, we'll just go from there. So um, before I end this, I want to um, leave you with a quote um, that really resonates with me. Um, and it really captures sort of, it captures the meaning of when life really hands us some unexpected challenges. And this quote is by Steve Maraboli, who is an author and a motivational speaker. Life doesn't get easier or more forgiving. We get stronger and more resilient. So thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, thank you, Laurie.